welcome to Hazard County, where the Dukes of Hazard, Bo and Luke Duke and Cousin Daisy, will do anything for a good time, a good cause, or a good woman. Waylon Jennings tells the story of the Dukes of Hazard starting Friday, January 26th. At 9 p.m. on January 26th, 1979, CBS broadcasted the first of five episodes of a new show called The Dukes of Hazard, created by Guy Waldron. The show was inspired by the popularity of Guy Waldron's 1975 film Moonrunners, which was about a family of moonshiners in the rural south. However, unlike Moonrunners, the Dukes of Hazard would focus on the lives of a family of reformed moonshiners, cousins Bo, Luke, and Daisy Duke alongside patriarch Uncle Jesse. The Duke family lives on a farm in fictional Hazard County, Georgia, and are very well known around town for their good-natured battles against corrupt county commissioner Boss Hogg and his sidekick, Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. The first episode of The Dukes of Hazard was entitled One-Armed Bandits. In the episode, Bo and Luke Duke hijack a shipment of Boss Hogg's illegal slot machines. The Dukes then set up the slot machines behind Boss Hogg's back and use the proceeds to donate them to their local orphanage fund in Sheriff Roscoe's name in order to ensure that he wins the upcoming re-election for Hazard County Sheriff. After One Arm Bandits had aired on CBS, a television critic for the Los Angeles Times wrote, This show will not get past the first commercial break. <laughs> Boy, was he ever wrong. What's up, Rebels? It is Chunky Monkey 40 here. Happy 45 years of the Dukes of Hazard. Today, we are going to be taking a deep dive into everything that the 1980s hit TV show, The Dukes of Hazard, has grown into. And we're going to try and uncover why and how this show from 45 years ago is still so popular amongst families and fans all across the world. Exactly 45 years since the first episode of the show broadcasted on CBS. And during the making of this documentary, I had the opportunity to sit down with John Schneider, who played Bo Duke on the original. Dukes of Hazard series and throughout this video you'll get to see some of those clips from the interview and in case you're wondering I'm gonna release the full 30 minute interview with John Schneider on February 3rd that'll be the day after part 2 of my 45 years of the Dukes of Hazard special comes out on YouTube so get ready guys be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for plenty more Dukes of Hazard videos like this and if you're watching the live premiere of this video on YouTube today is January 26 6th, 2024. It is just after 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern and exactly 45 years ago fans would have gathered all around the TV sets all across America to see the Duke boys and the General Lee for the very first time on television. Without further ado, let's begin our deep dive into everything that's happened throughout the last 45 years in Hazard County. The Dukes of Hazard began filming in and around a town called Covington, Georgia, which is not too far from Atlanta. The show was picked up by CBS and Warner Brothers, who initially had intended for it to be a filler series to temporarily replace The Incredible Hulk during its mid-season break. Down in Georgia is where they filmed the first five episodes of The Dukes of Hazard, one Arm Bandits, Daisy's Song, Mary Kay's Baby, Repo Men, and High Octane. It was in those episodes when we first met the Duke boys, Bo and Luke Duke, portrayed by actors John Schneider and Tom Wopat. The rest of the cast included Catherine Bach as Daisy Duke, Denver Pyle as Uncle Jesse Duke, Sorrel Book as Boss Hogg, James Best as Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, Sonny Schroyer as Deputy Enos Strait, and you can't forget Ben Jones as Crazy Cooter Davenport. The popularity of the Dukes of Hazard is rooted in its blend of action, comedy, and the show also held a sense of rebellion. The Duke boys, who are referred to as modern day Robin Hoods, drove an orange 1960. Dodge Charger known as the General Lee. This car would go on to becoming extremely iconic in the entertainment industry and very well known for its ability to perform some of Hollywood's most incredible stunt jumps, drifts, and the car could even drive on two wheels. Today is a very special day. It's been 45 years, 45 is a great number, since the pilot episode of the Dukes of Hazard, One Arm Bandits aired. How does that make wow. you feel? Uh, it makes me feel really good. But by the way, I have to clarify something. There was no pilot episode of the Dukes of Hazard. 
But CBS ordered five shows, so there really wasn't a pilot. You know, a pilot indicates that there was some test. So, you know, it, it's it's really pretty amazing knowing what I know about television and how, how shows are ordered now and how they were ordered then. It's amazing that they actually agreed to pay for five because that was expensive. I mean, we were jumping cars and we were in Georgia. We were, it was an expensive yeah. show. In fact, when uh, when uh, we came back to California, I think in, in 79, I think Dukes of Hazard was the most expensive show ever on television. We we're like a million three an episode. Yeah, it was crazy. The stunts and epic car chases may very well be one of the most notable reasons as to why the Dukes of Hazard was so successful. These car stunts and car chases were not something you saw every day on TV. And so that definitely played a huge role in why people immediately fell in love with the Dukes of Hazard TV show. The Dukes of Hazard was one of the first shows to make action sequences a common occurrence in each episode. The storyline also played a huge role in the show's popularity, as well as the fact that so many folks in small town America never felt properly represented on the big screen until the Dukes of Hazard came about. Especially country girls. Seeing a beautiful woman like Daisy Duke up on the big screen was something totally new. Katherine Bach, the actress behind Daisy Duke, has stated in the past that the girls tell me how much fun they had watching the show and how it was great to see someone who is feminine but tough and also held a job. It's funny that at the time I was taken to task for the clothes I wore, but now they are saying I was such a feminist. So I guess I was, if holding a job and working is being a feminist. And as for the male audience, whether you were a father, you were a toddler, a young kid or a teenage boy, I'm pretty sure Daisy Duke's red bikini and one arm bandits, alongside of course the legendary Daisy Duke short shorts, the beauty of Daisy Duke definitely sealed the deal for many. But, and now this might be the most important piece of the puzzle here, the instant popularity of the TV show could very well be credited to that faceless man at the beginning of every episode strumming the guitar. But it's amazing that they ordered all five of those shows, which I think is really a testimony to the power of, of Guy Waldron and Bob Clark, who created the show, but also to Waylon Jennings, who was the balladeer, obviously, you know, he, he, he told the story of Bo and Luke and Daisy and Uncle Jesse and, and the gang. But at that time, he had he had just had the, the first million shipping country music album and which was called I've always been I've always been crazy yeah right before Dukes wow. so when Waylon signed on Waylon was the biggest music star in the world and I think that might be why CBS went ahead and paid for five Waylon Jennings told the story of the Duke boys and his rising popularity in the country music industry definitely played a major role in the show's instant popularity Waylon didn't just play the part of the balladeer on the Dukes of Hazard he also wrote the theme song just a good old Oh and when the song was released as a single in August of 1980, it stood at number one on Billboard's US Hot 100 country chart for 17 weeks. In fact, the song got so big that it actually became Waylon Jennings' 12th number one hit in country music. Due to the overwhelmingly positive amount of feedback from the 21 million viewers on the first episode of the show, CBS knew they had a hit, so they immediately ordered 22 more episodes from Warner Brothers, and that's how the legend was born. Warner Brothers wanted to make the show easier and more cost effective to produce. So they pulled filming from Georgia and began filming in California at the Burbank Studios and the Golden Oaks Ranch, which is also known as Disney Ranch. They would also film scenes at Lake Sherwood and Valencia Oaks Ranch. But upon moving filming to California, this was where they began cleaning up the language used in the show. After those first five episodes, you didn't hear Boss Hogg calling Roscoe a jackass anymore, and you also never saw any violence. Because of this, The Dukes became a show rooted in Christian family values. It featured a perfect balance of epic car stunts, a classic comedy duo between Boss Hogg and Roscoe, and most importantly was the lesson at the end of each episode. The show taught the younger folks to always do right by others and be a respectable person. With the show's dominant audience now becoming young children, this is where the insane amount of merchandise began hitting the shelves. They made anything and everything Dukes of Hazard related. From toy General Lee's, t-shirts, 
backpacks, action figures, play sets, board games, to the classic 1980s metal lunchbox that featured Bo, Luke, Daisy, and the General Lee on the front. One of the most notable pieces of Dukes of Hazard merchandise was of course, the poster of Daisy Duke. The producers said to Catherine Bach, we want you in a bikini with lots of oil and inch long fingernails with your hair wet and slick back. But Catherine Bach responded to this and said, that's not my character. Plus, I'm an actress, not a beauty pageant girl. And so she came up with her own poster design and it sold over 5 million copies. In fact, the poster got so popular that it even caught the attention of First Lady Nancy Reagan after Catherine Bach visited the White House with one of the posters as a gift for one of her former school teachers who was working at the White House at the time. The Dukes of Hazard became a massive hit to say the least. In fact, in 1981, several cast members from the Dukes of Hazard actually went to Hazard, Kentucky, a real town, for their Black Gold Festival and the appearance of Boss Hogg, Sheriff Roscoe, Deputy Cletus Hogg, and Daisy Duke attracted over 100,000 Dukes of Hazard fans to the small town of Hazard, Kentucky. Pretty crazy. The show had also spawned two spin-off series, the first one being Enos, which followed Deputy Enos Strait on his adventure to Los Angeles. The show was short-lived as it only got one season, and later, Hanna-Barbera would produce a 20-episode cartoon miniseries called The Dukes. The Duke's cartoon began during the days of Coy and Vance Duke. That means that they were initially the stars of the show. However, Bo and Luke would eventually end up taking over the cartoon following John Schneider and Tom Wopat's return to the Dukes of Hazard TV show in late season five. Yeah, John Schneider and Tom Wopat actually left the Dukes of Hazard for 18 episodes back in 1982. This was due to a contract dispute over royalties from the merchandise. Because as we've established, Warner Brothers was selling every form of merchandise with their faces on it. Schneider and Wopat weren't all that thrilled with how much they were getting from it, so they decided to play hardball with the executives until they were able to renegotiate the terms of their contract. Now this would have put a delay on the show's production, but the producers decided they had an idea. Let's just bring in two identical cousins, Coy and Vance Duke, played by by Byron Cherry and Christopher Mayer. That way they wouldn't have to delay filming. And this was a terrible idea on the executives part. They had made very little changes to the script, so basically Coy and Vance were reading lines that were written for Bo and Luke. And the fans did not like this at all. And the ratings plummeted. Everybody wanted Bo and Luke back. So the executives decided to renegotiate contracts with Schneider and Wolpat and get them back on the show as soon as possible. And due to the show's popularity loss during the Coy and Vance phase, this caused Warner Brothers to have to make some major budget cuts to the show. Those infamous car stunts featured on the show were quite expensive. It's estimated that they went through 317 1969 Dodge Chargers during the filming of the show and a minimum of two to three cop cars per episode got destroyed during the filming of those wild stunts. So after the days of Coy and Vance, they had to cut down on jumping the real cars and they switched over to using miniatures. And fans were extremely disappointed about the miniatures because of how corny they looked. But that didn't stop the show from continuing on for another two seasons after the return of Bo and Luke. But overall, the show continued to put out some classic episodes following the return of Bo and Luke. Season 6, Episode 5, The Boar's Nest Bear. Season 6, Episode 7, A Boy's Best Friend. Season 6, Episode 16 and 17, Undercover Dukes. Season 7, Episode 1, Happy Birthday, General Lee. And Season 7, Episode 2, Welcome, Waylon Jennings. In fact, some of the cast members even directed several episodes. Denver Pyle, who played Uncle Jesse, directed 12 episodes of Dukes. Tom Wopat directed 5 episodes. Sora Book, who played Boss Hogg, directed 4 episodes and James Best, who played Roscoe, directed three episodes. When it came time for the show to come to an end in 1985, it was up to none other than John Schneider, Bo Duke himself, to direct and write the finale of the series. Here's what he had to say about it. You directed the finale of the Dukes of Hazard, opening night at the Boar's Nest. I did, what and I wrote it too. Like? You wrote it as well? Yeah, I wrote it, yeah, I wrote it. Wow. It was amazing. I was uh, I wrote that I wrote that episode, and I happened to be at a men's store somewhere in Los Angeles, and I needed a, a seven foot two, you know, seven foot plus actor to be in this in this show. 
And I, I looked across the way, you know, I'm looking at shirts and I looked up, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> so I saw this gentleman and uh, I said, I've got trouble finding shirts to fit and how in the world do you? And he was like, oh my God, you're John Schneider. You're from the Dukes of Hazzard. Oh, that's awesome. And I said, I am. I said, and I want you to come audition for, for a role because you're perfect. Are you an actor? And he said, he said no, I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, Kevin Peter Hall was his name. He went on after that episode of Dukes to be uh, Harry and Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, yeah. So he was he was great. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Um, yeah, so it, it was kind of a, I don't know that I discovered him. Probably the being on, I don't know if being on Dukes helped him at all, but I hope it did. Kevin's no longer with us. He's gone on to his reward. And I, I hope that uh, that chance meeting at the men's store actually helped uh, helped him for the rest of his life a bit. But writing and directing the show was really, really a lot of fun because, you know, we all loved each other. So we all wanted to make each other look as good as possible. And I, I knew it was the last episode, but I really didn't believe it. I don't think anybody did. You know, why would you cancel a show that was in the top 20? Over seven years, we averaged 28 million people a week wow. watching the show. You know, nowadays, somebody gets three and a half million people watching a show every week. They, you know, they throw, they throw a million dollar right. party. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, it was kind of beyond my belief that, that they really were serious about, uh, about the show not coming back the next year, but guess what? It didn't. And I knew that was, uh, I knew that was true because, uh, as soon as we were done, they took all of our sets out and they moved in, uh, West Wing. On February 8th, 1985, the finale of The Dukes of Hazard aired on CBS. After this, the show was sold to off-network syndication, which essentially means that they will continue to show reruns of The Dukes of Hazard on some smaller TV networks. But with the show over, this gave the cast members the ability to move on in their careers and start pursuing their next big ventures. During the run of the show, John Schneider and Tom Wopat had both released their first studio albums. John Schneider's debut album was Now or Never in 1981, and Tom Wopat released his self-titled debut album in 1983. As of January 2024, Tom Wopat has 11 studio albums released. Meanwhile, John Schneider has stayed very consistent in the music industry. He has released 19 studio albums alongside 17 singles. And just a little tidbit, I made one of his music videos. It was for a song called Kid From Somewhere. I made it in Grand Theft Auto V. It was really cool, you should go check it out. Both John Schneider and Tom Wopat continued acting as well. In 1986, John Schneider appeared alongside all the highwaymen in a movie called Stagecoach. Yes, he was in Stagecoach. In Stagecoach, John Schneider's character name was Buck and Buck was the stagecoach driver for basically the highwaymen. And that movie was great, you know? Willie Nelson was Doc Holliday, Chris Christopherson is Ringo, Johnny Cash is Marshall Curly Wilcox, it's a great film. In 1988, Denver Pyle started a tradition in Lamar County, Texas. It was Uncle Jesse's fishing tournament. In its first 10 years, the fishing tournament went on to raise over $160,000 for local children's programs in the area. And the fishing tournament is actually still going strong in 2024. And in 1989, Tom Wopat starred alongside Lindsay Wagner in a 12 episode miniseries called A Peaceable Kingdom. And the basis of this one was basically they own a zoo. <laughs> Also in 1989, Hazard County made its way to Capitol Hill when good old Ben Jones was sworn in as the Democratic representative for Georgia's 4th District. Ben Jones also won re-election in 1990, but then stepped down in 1993 after having completed two terms in Congress. And one year later, in 1994, the Duke's cast would reunite, only this time under sadder circumstances. This was when the news broke that Sorrel Book had lost his fight to colorectal cancer on February 11th, 1994. In February 1996, the Nashville Network began airing reruns of The Dukes of Hazard, which quickly became very successful in the ratings. And by November of that same year, there was plans to make a reunion special. Series creator Guy Waldron both wrote the script and he also served as the film's executive producer. Guy Waldron was noted to have written a version of the reunion script as early as 1988, three years after the original series had come to an end. It of course had to be reworked a little bit to reflect the passing of time and also to work around the passing of Sorrel Book. So in 1997 and 2000, 
two Dukes of Hazard reunion movies were made. How yeah. did those two come about? I think the world just wanted more Dukes of Hazard. Mm -hmm. So CBS found that there was a, uh, a possibility for them to make some money. So did Warner Brothers. So they did the first reunion movie. But um, they didn't even give us a, a farmhouse anywhere. We used what was basic, which actually was the back of Boss Hogg's house hmm. on the Warner Brothers lot. You only saw the back stairs. When I pull up in the in the Mitsubishi 300 or 3000, whatever that thing was. <laughs> um, so we pulled, so they gave us a set about the size of, of uh, four sheets of plywood because they didn't, you know, they didn't care. They didn't save anything from Dukes. No, they still had a couple of the cars in the transportation uh, pool, but. When filming began, Denver Pyle had lost a significant amount of weight. He was given a fat suit to wear, similar to what Sora Book would have worn while playing Boss Hog. And a scruffy white wig was also placed under Denver Pyle's trademark red cap, and a false white beard was applied to his face. Pyle's weight loss was attributed to the fact that he was suffering from lung cancer at the time of filming. The Dukes of Hazard reunion special premiered on CBS April 25th, 1997. It was overall very well received, even though it didn't necessarily break any new ground. It did, however, satisfy the fans of the original show. Sadly though, the 1997 Dukes reunion movie also marked Denver Pyle's final acting performance before his tragic passing just eight months later on Christmas Day in 1997. In 1999, Ben Jones, aka Crazy Cooter, broke new ground in the Dukes of Hazard franchise when him and his wife, Miss Alma, opened the first Cooter's place in Sperryville, Virginia. They created the store to give Dukes fans a place to visit and see the cars from the show. Also while purchasing merchandise, meeting some actors from the show, and walking through their extensive museum of both props from the Dukes of Hazzard and also vintage merchandise from the days when the show was on air. Cooter's Place was a very big success, and around the same time the first Cooter's store opened, the Dukes of Hazard fan club was preparing for a loose gathering of General Lees and a couple hundred fans at the original Boar's Nest down in Covington, Georgia. Sonny Schroyer, Ben Jones, Don Pedro Coley, who played Sheriff Little from Chickasaw County, and Jerry Rushing, whose life story inspired the Dukes of Hazard, also joined in on the fun. This was the very first big get-together of fans, and it was for the the 20th anniversary of the Dukes of Hazard. Here, basically what they did is they just partied at the Boar's Nest, which at the time was still exactly the same way it was on the show. The only difference was that the outside of it was painted red. But the inside, however, that was red even when Dukes was filming there. After spending some time at the Boar's Nest, everyone spread out all around town to begin hunting down the filming locations and putting together a list of as many filming locations as they could possibly find. Milton and Pete in particular went to the old Hazard Police Station from one Arm Bandits. And here on screen you can see Pete Cochis recreating Bo's drift that he made while picking up Luke and Daisy after they broke her out of jail. <laughs> It's very likely that after attending the 1999 Dukes convention in Covington, Georgia, that that is where Ben Jones saw the potential for fan and cast gatherings, and it planted a seed in his head for the next chapter of the Dukes of Hazard. That's all the time we got for this video, guys. Be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned because part two of my Dukes of Hazard 45 Years Later special is gonna drop next week. That video will be out on February 2nd, 2024. And then the full interview with John Schneider will drop on February 3rd, 2024. But with all that said and out of the way, I am ChunkyMonkey40 at YouTube.com. Happy 45 years of the Dukes of Hazard, y'all. And until next time, stay rebel. Just some good old boys Never meaning no harm It beats all you ever saw Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born They straighten them curves They flatten them heels Well someday the mountain might get them But the law never will